Today, Operation Anti Spruik in Hobart. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, where I've noticed posts covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. While continuing our series on property price reductions based on the information reported on the property portals, Cookie Boy has been searching out data for Hobart, and we're going to look at that information now and also cross correlate it with my modelling through my core market model. So we're going to start in postcode 7000, right in the heart of Hobart. And the first property here is an apartment, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, no car space. Listed 67 days ago on the 12th of July. And on the 14th of July, it was on at $1.095 million. On the 27th of August, it was reduced to $995,000 plus. And if we look at this particular postcode, postcode 7000, which of course is right in the middle of Hobart, you can see there that there's around 6,400 households, 28% own their property outright, 27% are borrowing, but 43% are renting. And if we look at the current profiles from a property price perspective, looking at the best case scenario, assuming that interest rates don't go much higher and the economy continues to travel well over the next three years, cumulatively, there's a possibility of a 12% rise for houses or a 9.4% rise for units. On the base case scenario, which is assuming that interest rates continue to rise and the momentum in the economy slows, there is a prospect of a fall of around 9.6% over the next three years cumulatively. For units, it's a smaller fall, down about 7%. And the worst case scenario, which basically assumes that stagflation takes a hold and the international situation also continues to deteriorate from a recession perspective, be it China or the US. And there, over the next three years, there's a scenario that says prices for houses could drop 27% over the next three years or 20% for units. Now coming back to households, around 31% of those borrowing are in mortgage stress, though that's just over 550 households. But around half of those renting, 1,418, are actually having difficulties with cash flow. And we define stress, of course, in cash flow terms. And that means we have a number of property investors who are also feeling the pain. Overall, households in financial stress is at 36%. Look at the property profiles in 7,000. 61% of the properties are houses, 26% are units, and 12.7% are other types of property, predominantly over commercial premises and shops. The population ratio is 2. And when the census was done last year, 10.6% of properties in this postcode were vacant, 725 properties. Looking at the investment returns, the gross investment return is at 5.4% on average in this particular postcode. That's quite high, hence the green. Net investment returns, 1.9%. And looking at the average taxable income, the ATO reported individual average taxable income last year was $82,627. But for households in the census last year, it was reported at $96,612. And looking at the monthly income flows, the average monthly income for a household in this postcode is just over $8,000. The average mortgage borrower is paying 27.6% of their salary and income to pay the mortgage. That's just over $2,200. And the average renter is paying 24.8% of their income, or $1,993. So now let's look at another property in the same area. This is another apartment, again in Hobart 7000, listed 121 days ago on the 18th of May. It's a four-bedroom, three-bathroom, three-car apartment on 215 squares. On the 19th of May, 
it was on the market at over $4.5 million. On the 15th of July, it was reduced to interest over $3.95 million. And here's another example, again in postcode 7000, listed 226 days ago on the 2nd of February. It's a house, three bedrooms, one bathroom, one car on 161 squares. And on the 3rd of February, it was listed at $995,000. On the 19th of August, it's now listed at $949,000 or offers over. And again, another property in postcode 7000. This was listed 109 days ago on the 30th of May. It's a house. It's got six bedrooms, four bathrooms, 16 car spaces, and it's on 1,459 square metres. On the 17th of July, it was EIO over $3.5 million. And on the 16th of September, it dropped to EIO over $3.25 million. Another property, this time in West Hobart, same postcode. This was listed 59 days ago on the 17th of July. It's a house, it's three bedrooms, one bathroom, two cars on 1,113 square metres. It has a gross rental yield of 3.31%, which is lower than the average in the postcode. On the 20th of July, it was listed at $975,000 plus, And on the 18th of August, it was reduced to $925,000 plus. And one more, this time in Mount Stewart. Listed 32 days ago on the 16th of August. It's a house, three bedrooms, one bathroom, one car on 698 square metres. Price range on the 17th of August was $1.25 million plus. On the 7th of September, it was reduced to $1.195 million dollars. Another one in the same area, but this time vacant land, listed 144 days ago on the 26th of April. And on the 26th of April, it was offers over $695,000. Now on the 15th of July, it was reduced to $595,000. Now we'll go to postcode 7004, just down the road. And this property at Battery Point, it's a house, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, three cars on 384 square metres. And the price range on the 30th of August was at $1.6 million plus. On the 12th of September, it's now $1.495 million plus. And looking at the data for this particular postcode, there's around 3,500 households in the postcode. 34% own their properties outright, 27% are borrowing, and 38% are renting. And of those borrowing, 28.6% are in mortgage stress, 274 people. 76.9% of renters are in rental stress, more than 1,000. And the overall financial stress metric for this postcode is currently 44.7%. Looking at the price scenarios, the best case for houses over three years is up 9.7%. The base case down 13% over three years. The worst case down 31%. Units, best case up 7.1% over three years. The base case down 9.5% and the worst case down 23.4%. Looking at the property profiles, 6% of properties here are houses, 23.5% are units and 16.5% are other forms of property. Population ratio is 1.96. And in the last census, 11.6% of properties were reported as vacant, which was 432 properties. Looking at the taxable income information from the ATO, average individual is $89,000. The average household is $94,600. And looking at the monthly income, monthly income on average for a household there is around $7,800. The average mortgage repayer is paying 25.7% of their incomes or just over $2,000. And the average renter is paying around 25% of their income 
with the average rent at around $1,993. So looking at another property in 7004, this is South Hobart again, a house on 650 square metres with four bedrooms, two bathrooms and two cars, listed 89 days ago on the 19th of June. On the 17th of July, it was listed at $875,000 plus, but on the 27th of August, it was on at $795,000 plus. Another example in 7004, listed 73 days ago, this house has three bedrooms, one bathroom, one car on 264 squares. On the 19th of August, it was on at $775,000. On the 11th of September, it offers over $725,000. Another one in the same area, a house listed 37 days ago on the 11th of August, five bedrooms, two bathrooms, one car on 438 squares. On the 3rd of September, it was on at $975,000. On the 10th of September, it was at $895,000 to $925,000. Another one in the same postcode, listed 135 days ago on the 5th of May. It's a house, six bedrooms, two bathrooms, one car on 373 squares. And on the 15th of July, it was offers over $1.1 million. On the 13th of September, it was offers over $980,000. And this one, again, in the same postcode, listed 24 days ago on the 23rd of August. A house, four bedrooms, one bath, four car on 739 square metres. And on the 31st of August, it was listed 975,000 to 1.06 million. And on the 13th of September, it was offered at $955,000 offers over. Now we'll go to 7005, just down the road again. And this property at Sandy Bay is a house. It's got four bedrooms, two bathrooms, two cars. And it was listed 38 days ago on the 9th of September, 2022. On the 16th of August, it was on offers over $1.5 million. On the 4th of September, it's now offers over $1.3 million. And if we look at the profile of this particular postcode, there are around 5,500 households there. 40% own outright, 24% have a mortgage, and 35.3% are renting. 53% of those with mortgage are in mortgage stress, that's 733 households, and 70% of those in rental stress, which is 1,397. Overall financial stress is 46.6%. Looking at the price scenarios for houses, the best case scenario over three years is up 6.9%. The base case is a fall of 15%. The worst case is a fall of 34% over the next three years, cumulatively. Looking at the property profiles, 69% are houses, 16% are units, and 14% are other types of property, including over shops and commercial premises. Population ratio is 2.15%. And in the last census, 11% were reported as vacant, which is 652 properties. Looking at the investment returns, the gross investment return is 5.5%, again quite strong. The net investment return is 2.3%. And looking at the income statistics, the ATO reported the average taxable income at $104,000 per individual. And the census had a household average of 98,952. Looking at the monthly cash flow, typical monthly income for households in this postcode is just over $8,200. Those paying the mortgage, the average repayment is 31.5% of income or $2,600. And the average renter is paying about 25% of their income on the rent, which is just over $2,000. Now we'll look at another property in the same postcode, Sandy Bay. This has a gross rental yield of 3.15%, which is below the average in the postcode. Listed 82 days ago on the 27th of June, this house has three bedrooms, two bathrooms, no car 
on 545 square metres. And on the 16th of July, it was offers over 1.35 million. On the 12th of September, it's now offers over 1.19 million. Another one also in the same postcode, listed 109 days ago on the 30th of May, a gross rental yield of 4.43%. And it's an apartment unit or flat, two bedrooms, one bathroom, one car on 367 squares. On the 13th of July, it was on at 650,000. On the 15th of September, it was at 600,000 plus. Another example, just down the road again, in the same postcode, listed 31 days ago on the 17th of August, a house on 640 square meters with three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and three cars. And on the 23rd of August, it was on at $980,000. On the 30th of August, it was on $895,000. Another property listed 73 days ago in postcode 7005. Listed the 5th of July 2022 as a townhouse. Two bedrooms, one bath, two car on 171 squares. And the offers were 865000 on the 15th of July but it dropped to 795,000 on the 26th of July. So you can see once again, a continuing trend of prices being reduced. Now, of course, when a property is newly listed, they might put it on at a very full value, hoping to attract and then reduce. But there is a consistent trend here, and it's a trend that really has only just started in the last two or three months. So whilst Hobart home prices have tended to hold their value reasonably well, it looks to me as though things are on the turn now and we should expect more falls ahead. Not least because, of course, the amount of mortgage stress in and around Tasmania is some of the highest across the country. And affordability is really extended already thanks to the limited incomes relative to the price of property. Hope you found that useful. If you would like to suggest other areas of the country for us to do a research project on, just put the comments below. I don't promise, but we'll give it a go. And I just want to say thanks to Cookie Boy for pulling the information out to enable us to make the show. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.